So now that we have developed uh, the mechanics to be able to deal with three-dimensional space in a, a really an algebraic fashion, uh, we can start talking about equations of geometric objects in three-dimensional space. And just like when you first learn two-dimensional space, after you start plotting some points, the next thing you pretty much do is you plot lines. We're going to look at the three-dimensional analogs of lines. First of all, since a line can exhibit, exist in really any dimensional space, we will be looking at lines in 3D space. But second, we'll also be looking at planes, and planes, in a sense, are really a good analog of lines in two-dimensional space. In a sense, uh, a plane is one, dimensional, one dimension less than three-dimensional space, just as a line is one dimension less than two-dimensional space. So in that sense, a plane is an analog to a line uh, in, in two dimensions when we're looking at three dimensions. So a line is determined by pretty much two things, a point P0 with coordinates x0, y0, z0, and a direction which is represented by some uh, vector v, a displacement, displacement vector v, I guess, which really represents the, uh, uh, the movement from, one, from point P to another point on the line. Um, and I would like to point out that uh, this choice of a vector v is really well defined up to a scalar. Two vectors, so we're really saying that v is parallel to the line L. Two vectors v and w are parallel to each other precisely when v is a scalar multiple of w. Here we're assuming v and w are non-zero, so z is also non-zero. There are a couple of ways of seeing this. First of all, if V and W are parallel to each other, then their unit vectors have to either be equal to each other or be negative to each other uh, because there, is, there are only two unit vectors pointing in any given direction. That sort of requires some, uh, uh, a lot of assumptions though. Maybe a better way of attacking this is to show that uh, if two guys are, uh, uh, if two vectors are parallel, then we know that their cross product is equal to zero. And if their cross product is equal to zero, you can show that the two by two minors that you take when evaluating the cross product in terms of determinants all have to be zero. And if the two by two determinants are zero, then you can show that uh, all the components in, of V and W have to be uh, scalar multiples of one another. All right. So let's start coming up with actual equations for lines. So I've made our picture over here a little bit more busy. L consists of a bunch of points P, X, Y, Z, and I'd like to find a formula for this point P in terms of our given point P0 and our vector V, which I've given components A, B, and C. So first I'm going to represent P0 and P in terms of vectors R0 and R, just because technically we can really only do our vector operations if we are representing these points as position vectors. So R0 is the vector with components X0, Y0, Z0. R is the vector with components X, Y, Z. Those are the, co uh, the, co uh, the coordinates of P0 and P respectively. Now, R minus R0 is a vector along the line L. So it goes in the same direction as V, it's parallel to V. So that means that R minus R0 has to be a scalar multiple of V. T times V, T sum scalar. Then adding R0 to both sides, we get the following vector equation for a line. So this is a vector equation. And we'll have a few different forms of equations for a line. This one represents things as vectors. So R, the position vector for our point P, is equal to R0, which is the position vector for our point P0, plus the scalar T times uh, V, our vector. And in terms of components, this gives us X, Y, Z is equal to X0, Y0, Z0, plus A, T, B, T, C, T, which you can add together to get X is equal, uh, X, Y, Z is X0 plus A, T, Y0 plus B, T, Z0 plus C, T.
So we call the vector equation r equal to r0 plus tv a parametric equation. That is, we have this uh, parameter t, which for any value of t, we plug it into this equation and it gives us the position vector of a point on the line l. So the line is parameterized by t. Okay. Uh, we can also write parametric equations for each coordinate, and this is very common. So instead of thinking of it as a vector equation, we can write down uh, an equation for each coordinate. x equal to x0 plus at, y equal to y0 plus bt, and z equal to z0 plus ct. And we get a point by plugging the same value of t into each equation and then treating these as the coordinates of the point. So for example, let's find a parametric equation for the line that goes through the point 1, negative 1, 3 in the, in the direction of 2, 3, 0. So if we want to do this as a vector equation, we have x, y, z, the components x, y, z are equal to the vector with components 1 plus 2t, negative 1 plus 3t, and 3 plus 0t, which simplifies to just 3. If we want to write this out in terms of uh, a bunch of equations for each coordinate, we get x is equal to 1 plus 2t, y is equal to negative 1 plus 3t, and z is equal to 3. So if a, b, and c are non-zero, then we can solve for t. We saw in the last example that when a and b were non-zero, we had equations for x and y that involved t, but where, whereas when c was zero, we had a, an equation for z that did not involve t. But if all of them are non-zero, a, b, and c, the components of the direction vector, then we can solve for t in each instance. For example, if I solve x equal to x0 plus a t for t, I get t is equal to x minus x0 divided by a. Similarly, we get that t is equal to y minus y0 divided by b, and t is equal to z minus z0 divided by c. So since any point is given by plugging in the same value t, for all the different coordinates. These t's here must all be the same. So we get something called symmetric equations, a set of symmetric equations. x minus x0 over a is equal to y minus y0 over b is equal to z minus z0 over c. So let's interpret this. x0, y0, z0 are constants as are a, b, and c. Those are our particular point on the line and a vector describing the direction of the line. Then this says if we choose, say, x, then y and z can be determined from that point x. All right. Now, if one of these happens to be 0, for example, let's say a is 0, but b and c are non-zero, what we get is x is equal to x is 0. You can't solve for t because it's not there. But the other two you can still solve for t, and you get y minus y0 over b is equal to z minus z0 over c. So it looks a little bit different. However, here's question one. Suppose that both a and b are zero, so x is x zero, y is uh, y zero, uh, but c is non-zero, so that z is equal to z zero plus ct, where c is non-zero. What equations do we get that are analogous to these things? 